We know about Earth's magnetic field and how important it is to, uh, well, basically protect us from all the evils of the universe and to keep our atmosphere intact. Yes. So the question has been raised, um, do you find magnetic fields on exoplanets? Now, this is a very important question because obviously if we're looking for life out there, we probably need to find a planet that has um, a rocky surface with probably water or something similar. And it would have to have a magnetic field, would it not? But yes, um, it, it probably would be an important component because mm. uh, exactly as you said, our, uh, the Earth's magnetic field protects the atmosphere. Uh, it also protects the surface from the, the more energetic subatomic particles that are uh, floating around in space, m many of which are launched from the sun uh, with its solar wind and occasional solar flares. We are largely protected, not entirely, but largely protected from the effects of those things on the Earth's surface by the Earth's own magnetic field. So yeah. yes, the question is, do rocky exoplanets have magnetic fields? Now, I, I have to say that I would uh, assume that the answer to that is probably yes, because planets tend to be made in the same way, no matter where in the universe they are, um, and rocky uh, planets uh, probably usually have, like the Earth does, uh, a core made of uh, iron and nickel, and that is what generates the magnetic field. It acts like a dynamo and generates the Earth's magnetic field as, as the Earth rotates. So you'd think that the answer would probably yes, be yes to the question of do rocky planets around uh, other stars have magnetic fields? And so observations have been made with the Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array, very large array which is a, a telescope, um, a, a, an array telescope in the United States, mm. uh, one of the biggest in the world, actually. Uh, I've visited it. It's quite an extraordinary place, um, operated by the U.S. National Science Foundation's National Radio Astronomy Observatory. And so uh, observations have been made by scientists of uh, a, a star called YZ SETI, um, which is a star that actually it emits radio signals. Now, not all stars do, but this one does. Yeah. And um, the, the, what the what the scientists have done is use the radio signals coming from this star, which is about 12 light years away, so it's a, it's a close star, mm -hmm. uh, to interpret uh, what is happening uh, to its planet, because we know that YZ SETI, ha I should say YZ SETI, shouldn't I, just for our American listeners. Potato, uh, potato. That's the one, yes. Uh, <laughs> is YZ SETI B uh, is a known planet uh, orbiting the star. Yep. Uh, and um, what has been observed are uh, sort of uh, bursts of radio waves, um, which are to do with the interaction between the star's magnetic field and the planet going around it. Now, the, the good thing about this planet is it goes around once in two days. Oh. So it's very close to its parent star. And that means um, that there are probably, you know, magnetic interactions uh, um, taking place between them if the planet has a magnetic field. Mm. So uh, to cut the long story short, um, these bursts of of radio emission um, um, have been analysed and, de and the there is enough evidence that they are, um, that the scientists in question are convinced that what they have proved is that the planet uh, YZ SETI B has its own magnetic field. Um, so there are a number of uh, different um, uh, a number of different scientists involved with this, including the director of the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and astronomers from Bucknell University and the University of Colorado. So quite a, a, a disparate group of uh, principally U.S. scientists who've been looking at this. Uh, and um, some very nice quotes from those scientists. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them uh, who says, I'm seeing this thing that no one has seen happen before, which is uh, always a nice thing when you're, when you're a working astronomer and you're sitting at a big telescope somewhere and something turns up. Um, um, we saw the 
uh, initial burst and it looked beautiful. This is a quote from another of them. When we saw it again, it was very indicative that, okay, maybe we really have something here. So what they're say saying is that as this planet goes round its star, um, they have, uh, it, 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 it interacts with the magnetic field of the star in such a way that you get, you get bursts of, of radio energy. Uh, and so, um, the, in, in fact, so let me read another quote from one of the scientists. Uh, what we're doing is looking for a way to see the invisible magnetic fields. We're looking for planets that are really close to their stars and are similar in size to Earth. Uh, these planets are way too close to their stars to be some way you could live. But because they're so close to the planet, it's kind of plowing through a bunch of stuff coming off the star. And that's the, the equivalent of, this, of the solar wind that we have in the solar system. If the planet has a magnetic field and it plows through enough star stuff, it will cause the star to emit bright radio waves. And that's uh, what they are interpreting this, these bursts as being. Mm. Uh, in fact, they've, they've kind of um, coined a new phrase, which is really nice, um, extrasolar space weather. Uh, space weather beyond the solar system. So when we think of space weather, we think of the environment of the Earth principally, but uh, but the subatomic particles within within the inner solar system that come from the sun. And space weather is actually a it's a big issue. In fact, I was talking to one of my colleagues in the space agency yesterday about exactly this: uh, how you how you deal with space weather. Yeah. Um, uh, in a, in a probably in a legislative fashion because that's what a lot of the what the space agency does but the, but you, yeah you've got to make the rules so how does it work um, um you know what 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 uh, what's the what's the uh, what's the story with it anyway sorry go ahead yeah I, i'm just i don't mean to throw a bucket of water over the discovery but should we be surprised that exoplanets probably have magnetic fields i mean we were surprised when we found the first exoplanet but we always thought there'd be one and now we've found thousands so it stands to reason that a lot of them would have mag magnetic fields as well yes and that is certainly true and it's already been established with the bigger ones like the you know the hot jupiters yeah uh, that's been established that they all, that they do have magnetic fields these things are bigger brighter beefier in every way and so things like that are easier to detect mm. the crucial thing about this is that this is a rocky planet an earth-like planet in terms ah. of size and that's the difference but uh, you know as i said at the beginning you you might well expect it given that if it's a rocky planet made like the rocky planets in the solar system it will probably have an iron core uh, which will give rise to a magnetic field um on the other hand here's a counter argument to that andrew oh um venus doesn't um, and neither does Mars. So mm. there are two rocky planets in our solar system, which are quite new by, that don't have magnetic fields. Um, and certainly not, not uh, magnetic fields today. Now, Mars is thought to have had a magnetic field, uh, but it's lost its magnetism because it's, it's too small uh, for that to be sustained by the, the core of the planet. Uh, yeah. the, the planets cool down too much. Venus is a different kettle of fish, though, because it, it it's Earth-like. It's, it's but there's a, we're almost the same size, aren't we? Yeah, Earth and Venus. Right. Yeah. So yeah, if Venus doesn't have a magnetic field, then it's not a not a foregone conclusion that any rocky planet is going to have a magnetic field. Yeah. Uh, so that's the the issue. Now there is one twist to this story that I found fascinating. Mm. That is that. Um, Magnetic fields, uh, when you combine them with a uh, solar wind, and that's what, uh, the, the, what we're talking about with space weather, uh, that's what produces the aurora on the Earth, the yes. northern and southern lights, the aurora borealis, the aurora, Austra aurora australis. And, and we see them on the gas giants too. We do, we? yeah. All the, all the gas giants have aurora as well. Yeah. Um, now, the, these, now, aurora can be detected in radio waves as well as visible light that's the crucial thing so you can you can know about aurora from radio astronomy mm. and it turns out that this yb seti uh, system has aurora uh, but what they're actually seeing is aurora on the star oh what <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow interactions between the magnetic field and the and the wind of particles coming off um 
cause magnetic disturbances, which they can identify as being due to aurora, even though we can't see them. Uh, but they also think that if the planet has its own atmosphere, and that's certainly not something that's known, but if it did, that would also have aurorae. Quite so, incredible. Yeah. So was, that, that's another thing. Aurorae could be a very common thing in the universe too, sounding like it. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Indeed. Wow. That's that's quite a discovery. See, I, I, I didn't tip water on them. I just... Oh, no, you didn't. You, you brought up an angle that created more... Information. More information, that's that's correct. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. It's always good to um, to be sceptical of these things. Oh, I, I'm an optimist when it comes to astronomy. Oh, so am yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Actually, I'm an optimist when it comes to pretty well everything, I have to say. <laughs> it really annoys some people. Well, yes, but they're pessimists. But... Um, if you want to chase up this story, you can go to one of our favourite websites and, and read up on it, phys.org, P-H-Y-S, by the way, phys.org. This is Space Nuts, Andrew Dunkley here with Professor Fred Watson. Okay, we checked all four systems, and uh, with a go. Space Nuts. <laughs>